Hi, my name is Louisa Piet, and you tuned in to uh, What Matters Most. This is our second program. We had one um, months ago, and uh, we are very, very pleased to do this edition, which is happening in the Thanksgiving week. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And I also would like to introduce my guest. Her name is Deborah Delfrano. Did I pronounce it well? Uh, Delfrano. Del Delfrano. And uh, she is so well known in this town. We live in Londonderry, New Hampshire. And uh, she's one of the uh, most amazing, uh, hardworking ladies I know. And uh, I'm inviting her here, especially to talk about a, a program or a, an organization that she started to deal with the environment. So today, our talk will be focused on the environment and what uh, is happening in this town of Londonderry. Deborah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. Of it's course, of course. Who else? Uh, you know, I don't we, know. <laughs> we, would, <laughs> we definitely wanted to have you on the show, and uh, I'm glad you were able to make it. I know you're extremely busy. Your newspaper comes out tomorrow, I think. Well, it's actually got printed yesterday, and um, it's out today, but it's at the post office, and so they mail right. it. So wow. you get it tomorrow. But wow. But uh, before we, before long, uh, I, I would like to read uh, Deborah's uh, bio because I'm, uh, you know, what I, what I said was that, you know, Deborah has lived here for 25 years with her husband, Chris, and their three children. Um, in her personal, she's here in her personal capacity, but she is a, an elected official. She's a, a town councilwoman. And we're very proud of the fact that she's the only woman that's represented there. And are you the first woman elected no. to town council no, but in Londonderry? But for a very close. long time. For a very long time. Yeah. So she is a town council woman, and uh, we're very proud of her for uh, being there with the boys and trying to get uh, the interest of this town represented. Uh, especially those most in need, you know, women and children, and uh, what's good for the town. Uh, so uh, my, that's my version of, of Deborah. Uh, she's leading a new green uh, charity that encourages women and men to be mindful of their environment. And uh, through var various actions and community activities and projects, including the collection of plastic bags. And uh, Deborah is also committed to her family. She raised three children in this town, and my hat's off to you. I only have two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, I thank you again for tuning in for uh, our second edition of uh, What Matters Most. Again, my name is Louisa Piet, and I am a former broadcaster with the BBC World Service and Radio France International and the Voice of America in Washington, D.C. I was a, an anchor as well as a radio show host for over 15 years. Um, and of course I let that go for a while, but I'm back because I live in this beautiful town and I wanna do something for my town. And I think this is probably the best use of my time in terms of connecting and, and bringing issues that matter. Deborah, I wanna come back to you to just uh, ask you to do your own introduction. How <laughs> do you like to be known? Because I, I would hate to misrepresent uh, the way you'd like to be called and, um, or represented. Deb is fine. Deb is fine. Yep. So Deborah is, you know, That's okay, what I got but yelled at. Deb. For. Everybody knows her as Deb. Um, and but uh, and she has done so much. Um, I actually have a, a, a kind of a bio that she sent me, um, and it reads. I'm going to read it. Uh, Deborah is the founder of Nutfield Publishing LLC with a strong civic background. And she has proficiency in sales, marketing, strategic planning, website concept and design, re-engineering town and state government, because we know she's a town councilwoman, fundraising, and she has worked in many think tanks. Deborah is determined to continue to provide local communities with her much needed pub publications as they are important elements used to educate and inform citizens on important local topics. Deborah has a Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science from Salem uh, State College. Deborah is very active with various civic organizations, and uh, she has lived here, as I mentioned earlier, 
for 25 years. My goodness, I've only lived here for five years, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a feat. It's, a, it's, it's an amazing uh, uh, record. Uh, this is a beautiful town. And uh, Deborah, I, I want to dive right into uh, uh, sort of asking you a, a little bit about uh, what prompted you to start the Green Group here in Londonderry. Well, um, I had been thinking about it for a very long time, and um, I finally was, I was sitting as a uh, board member at the Y, and I had fulfilled my nine years, and it was time to step away, and it was perfect timing for me to take this new project on, um, so I did. And it's the green team of Londonderry, and the, the the group itself, the word green, stands for different things. So the G is gardening and sustainability. Um, the R is renewable, recyclable. Um, the E is environment. The other E is energy. And the last letter, N, is nature. So um, I reached out to conservation, um, Beautify Londonderry, and the, the uh, rail trail, because in my mind, those three groups that already exist um, are uh, groups that are putting forth um, an initiative of outdoors and um, our, our world around us and making sure that we take care of it. Um, because if we don't have it, we're in a lot of trouble. And um, that was how the green team kind of came about. And one of our uh, first projects was the collecting of plastic bags so that we could um, get a Trex bench. We actually collected enough for two, which we did. Thank you. That's it excellent. wasn't us. It was it was the community the volunteers, that, that but stepped forward. It was forward. you who steered them towards that. So it, it was. We need but to it, recognize but that. But it, it really was everybody pulling forward. And one of the, the, the mm -hmm. things that kind of struck me when we were collecting it is this young lady from um, North School, I'm not sure how old she was, maybe fourth grade. Um, she looked at me when North School was dropping off their bags and she said, Mrs. Paul, we sure do waste an awful lot. And I said, you know what, that's what I wanted to hear because someday you're gonna be at a company and be the CEO and you're gonna say, you know what, we waste too much. Let's figure out a better way. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, we need to make kids aware that they can make a difference in the future. At a very young age. We need to reach out to these children while they're growing up and absorbing. They're like a sponge. They're absorbing knowledge, and we need to give them the basics. And our environment will not survive if we do not do something. And that's why I am so in awe and so appreciative of your initiative. Well, and another staff. person I need to recognize here is um, before Andy had um, sold his farm. You're talking about uh, Max Apples, oh, which sorry. is uh, a Mack. very, uh, Andy Mack, who, um, senior. Uh, Senior who owned uh, one of the biggest, uh, if not the largest, uh, farm. Well, he uh, used here. to own. He did. He used to own. He, he sold bits of it, but it's been here since the, the 1800s, 1700s, 1800s, 1800s, uh, and it's so well known. It's Max apples, and if you live in the area, please go pick some apples there, and they don't do oh, just that. More they, than they apples, more there's than apples, peaches and pumpkins and, and uh, vegetables and maple said, syrup and right, everything right. else and there. And free apple cider, hot apple cider. So that's a good reason for stopping by there. But it has been sold, hasn't it? Yes. Right. Yes. But he did allow us a piece of property because we wanted to create a pollinator garden. And uh, I don't know if everyone's aware, but the bee population has been dropping. And without the pollinators, and the bees are the biggest, but there are many others, um, and the butterflies. Um, we won't have enough food to sustain ourselves. And New Hampshire's- I hear that without bees, we will die. We, we yeah. actually, if bees are gone, human beings will be gone too, which is very, very scary. And as well, I like to say, it's code red for the environment. And for those creatures that are leaving us, on a daily basis, we're losing species. And I cannot believe that we can count how many of these species there are when you think about 
elephants and you know go back to Africa and look at those lions and all the tigers it, th there is a real threat going on with this climate change that's going on and I'm so glad you got this well, bit of land and, and that you're encouraging our neighbors to join in in this effort uh, nothing could be better than saving our environment and that means saving the world well and we want to do it in a, in a way that will connect um, you know, neighbors and um, young families and, and elderly people as well, because everybody loves to get dirty and everybody likes to dig in the dirt. But there's more to it than just flowers. We want to incorporate art. Um, and there are a other, couple other things that we want to do. That's um, very Hopefully interesting. a community very garden. Uh, we'd like to evolve eventually to a community garden that will sustain our farmer's market which will, again, create more community, more sustainability. New Hampshire is an agricultural town, but right. its biggest product mm -hmm. is trees. Right. Um, we have towns with lots and lots of land, but nobody is really producing enough. And, and the pandemic was a, an eye-opener mm -hmm. to sit there and say, okay, yes. we have a shortage of, of you know, toilet paper. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand why toilet paper, not tissues, but Okay. Right. Um. <laughs> right. That's a good one. I, I need to, <laughs> I but need that's to investigate the point. that. Um, the fact is, is that if we couldn't get food here, and we, we would be in a lot of trouble. And so my thought was, is that if by just our own town, and maybe other communities will do the same thing, you know, being able to take people, who, and, and this, this all helps the environment. So if you have a yard that's an acre, and a half of that acre is, is, is lawn, Take that acre and cut it in half, that half acre and cut it in half again and turn that into a garden and mix it with flowers and sustainability food um, because this will help in a lot, a lot of different ways. Uh, create, creating more places for pollinators. Do not clean. Do not rake. Do not get the, the, the bees live under the ground, under the leaves in fallen branches right. you need to keep those around I have no idea you know I know it looks pretty and right, everybody wants right. a pristine lawn right, right. but that is not necessarily so we need to leave our leaves alone and let the bees uh, survive under the, those leaves and uh, that that is I'm so glad you're here on the show too there's so much us, this would have to be a, a 10 week show to we go through it I all I want you back um, I, but how about that I want you back because this fine. is the most important uh, topic in my view that we can talk about as neighbors. This is something that brings all of us together. This show is named What Matters Most because we want to focus on what brings us together, unity of neighbors to save and to preserve our environment, to make it beautiful well, and to create food that well, we all Well, to take buy. care of each other. I right. mean, you know, mankind is a, a social being and we need society just like certain uh, insects and animals we need to have our society and we're social creatures and you know isolating draws attention to how much more we need to um, pull together and connect to each other um, coming from the city I was used to that even though my city was big it behaved like a village Everybody knew everybody. Everybody was, you know, if I fell Can and hurt my knee. Can you tell us where you grew up? Uh, and oh that's boys. another thing. We, we're going to get to that much later. Very interesting lady here. So, so uh, which town was this? I grew uh, up Massachusetts, in Massachusetts, right? Yes, in Massachusetts. Yes. I was born in Revere, Massachusetts, which is the first public beach in the United States. Um, we didn't live far from the beach, um, but it was, it was a definite bonded community because it had a lot of immigrants and they took pride in their properties. They would be out there, you know, sweeping the sidewalks and scraping the gum off and making sure that, you know, the town was clean and safe and that was really important. And people did look out for each other. Um, you know, if, if I was walking down the street and an elderly woman was struggling with the bag, somebody would say to me, go help her. Oh. I mean, that's the we way it was. That, we um, want that back. And that's what you're doing here. You're helping people get together, love each other, work towards helping those in need I, uh, in our community. And I'll tell you, I lived everywhere, as you know. I'm a 
they call me a world trotter, uh, you know, somebody here called me worldly, uh, which probably is appropriate because I've lived in Europe, I've lived in, you know, all over Europe, Portugal, France, I lived in Sweden, uh, I lived in the UK for the longest before I moved to the US 30 years ago with my family. In fact, I was expecting my daughter and she's the only American born citizen. <laughs> we, we, we had to become citizens, but my daughter was born in Alexandria, Virginia. And so um, th this, is, this is why we, we, you know, one of the reasons why we love America is because, you know, it's a, it's a land of, of immigrants, but immigrants that come here with a purpose. They want to do something for themselves and their families, but also for their communities and for the world. And and that's why I so love to hear these stories that you're yeah. telling me. I mean, we, we all, everything is about choice. And that's what makes, I believe, America so wonderful. We have a freedom to speak and we can voice our opinions and hopefully be because this is Be Kind Week. Um, hopefully we That's can be right. kind about it. You be can kind. differ. Be kind this week. It's <laughs> Be Kind Week. You and I can differ, and that's fine. But listen, people don't listen. They, they, they all of a sudden put blinders on and block things out, and they don't listen. You right. and I may not right. agree, but you right. may say right. something right. that might change my mind. That's right. Or I may that's say right. something exactly. that changes your mind. Absolutely. But somewhere in the middle, there's a beautiful, happy medium that we can both still remain friends Absolutely. and get along, and that's it. And, and that's exactly the purpose of this show, What Matters Most. And I don't know if you had a chance to watch my first guest, Dr. Richard Loeb, and we were talking about how to make the world a better place, because one of the reasons why I had him as my first guest is because he always signs off uh, his emails as, you know, make the world a better place, encouraging every one of us to do something. It doesn't matter who you are, you can make a difference. And, and I think that's what you're doing there, I, I really yeah. think. Except I'm not worldly. <laughs> I'm not worldly. No, but you are, but you know what? What matters is to me is local. It's the planet Earth. It's it the is. planet Earth. It is. And we're it all, is. what you do in Londonderry, will reverberate and, and through the show, so many people around the world, all continents will be watching you because of my connection. So you're connected to me and they say that if you hold hands uh, okay. with seven people, you will surround the world, you will have enough people that know one of those seven to connect yeah. you to the rest of the world. And that's, you are my connection to the local community and I am your connection to the world. Well, for me, it's, it's yes. all about making it selfish it's very but selfish it because be. it makes me feel Absolutely. good when no, i feel i good. can make a difference right and right. and i can't change the world by right. myself right. but i can change my community that's right and and i and, and I that's what i do in my previous show i mentioned that one of my favorite taglines of all time is think globally in terms of knowing that you're part of this planet earth but act locally that is so powerful. You're acting locally and you're impacting this community and you're impacting the world as a result, in my view. Well, thank you. Yeah. So that is the green team. Right. And uh, Andy was so generous to let us use this land and Kyle who took over Andy's property has, has also thought uh, allowing us to continue nice. to use this property. So we're Very moving nice. forward to becoming a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just finished mm -hmm. doing our bylaws. We're mm -hmm. finishing up the articles, and we'll mm -hmm. get that submitted. And hopefully, by January, the end of January, we'll be all legit with all those documents. Um, and this group will take on a life of its own. And, and I really hope it does, because I have a couple of kids working on a website so that we will have... Um, so tomatoes grow really good in your yard. But yes. broccoli grows really good in my yard. Right. So right. we were going to have an online kind of agricultural nice. swap, nice. so that people can trade. But you have to be—you have to bring something. You can't right. just right. and whatever's left over. We're hoping that that will be the product we will bring to the farmers market that will then in turn raise money to help with the, you know, having more pollinator gardens throughout the town and educating people. We've already had UNH come and speak. Um, at the Lions Hall, because that's where we have our meetings, right. the third. The Lions Hall is here, uh, a club here in Londonderry, where uh, we're allowed to, to meet. It's, it's a very kind club. It's a community club that allows 
uh, all of us to uh, to hold uh, worthy community events uh, there. Well, so. thank you. And um, the uh, the meetings are uh, the third Thursday of every month at six thirty upstairs. Um, our next big event is on December 5th to align with the uh, lighting of the trees. Mm -hmm. The Lions will be selling Christmas trees. Uh, this is a great organization, civic organization. They help a lot. Um, and we'll be um, producing swags. You have to sign up. We only have four seats left. Um, and this and is a fundraiser. A fundraiser. And I, I was going to say, uh, sign me up, but I realized that that day is not good because I'm probably not going to be in town. But I, I, I promised Deb that I would be a very active member of the Green team, the Green group. Well, even and if you I, can't I make intend it, to be very, very active. Even if you can't uh, make it, you can always make a donation of $20. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's important to know. It, it, and I definitely like the idea of swapping produce for example i grow vegetables in my garden and every year i try different things i even tried potatoes i do tomatoes every year and green beans and you know uh, grows really and i well. right i get lots of green beans and i get a lot of parsley and also cilantro so i i'm definitely going to be the one selling parsley and cilantro and there you go. to you uh, swapping and, and taking it to the farmer's market because I get a lot of it and guess what else I get a lot of? Raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can lead into this next segment. Right. So we have had UNH come in and do a, a lecture on, you know, leaving the leaves and why it's important in the homes for these pollinators. Starting in January, we will have a, a few more series from UNH um, and they will be on canning, pruning, jarring, pickling, um, preserving, how to, how to get more produce. And, and, and that's, what, that's, like you said, you have yeah. a lot of it, but how do you keep it? Right. How do you, you know, right. be able to extend the life of that product? And right. this will be a great education for people, not just adults, but children mm -hmm. alike. I mean, it's something. It's important for children. I, I you know, uh, have to say I became a grandma uh, only eight months ago, my <laughs> daughter had a baby, and so I have a beautiful granddaughter, Kasima. And uh, I, one of the things that I thought about when they moved in with us, because they moved from the UK to the United States, and they are uh, homeless and staying with us, and we're very happy that they are homeless and staying with us because we love our granddaughter and we love our daughter and our our, our uh, son-in-law. But I want. Kasima to do gardening with me. That's one of the things that I think every child should be exposed to. Some may not be interested in it, but let's give them the basics, something to work with. Yeah. As they and so up. there will be a lot of different projects next year. We're going to do our plant sale again, which last year was hugely successful. That's right. Um, and then I we'll took part in that one. There you that go. was my first and only activity. <laughs> well, we tend, we, we're going to be doing a dandelion photo contest, and there's a That's few other beautiful. things that we're going to be doing. And again, um, we do want to incorporate art. So once the garden gets mm -hmm. going, right mm -hmm. now it's a meadow, mm -hmm. and because we wanted to see what grew, and that will tell us really what kind of soil is there and what likes it there, and will allow us to now mm -hmm. think about pollinator plants that will do well there. Um, but this fundraiser is to raise money um, for sunflower seeds, which we hope to give out to North, South, and um, S Matthew Thornton. Um, and Matthew Thornton is the, uh, it's the, the three middle elementary. school. No, oh, three elementary. Oh, we have three elementary schools We do. Here. How, uh, what are they? Um, North School, North which school. is the polar oh, yes. bears. So they're going to get the white sunflower seeds. Wonderful. And then South School, which are the hawks. And they're going to get the brown nice. sunflower seeds. Very nice. And Matthew Thornton mm -hmm. is the tiger. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get orange brown. Mm -hmm. And then they will be for the first graders. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to grow these sunflowers. And they're going to go to where the meadow is and mm -hmm. plant them. And they'll be able to see which ones are which because of the different colors. Right. And uh, it will also be another attraction to our garden area. But as it grows and it, you'll see it evolve, um, it's going to be done in a very um, not a more free-formed than like an English right. kind right. of free-forming free garden as right. opposed to a very structured, landscaped right. 
right. garden. Um, and that's what nature likes. Nature likes um, yes. to be there to help us out the winds, the rain, the, you know, as we mentioned earlier, the leaves, you know, now we have, we live in this beautiful town, Londonderry in New Hampshire, where we get beautiful fall leaves. Uh, you know, we get all the yellows, the reds, they're very pretty. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, that, that, uh, that, that's amazing. I, I'm really so excited <laughs> about the Green Group and I, I want uh, you to, you know, uh, can you explain who the board is and that we are going to have another conversation about the, uh, the Green Group uh, because, you know, we've got the founder here, but then we're going to have more people come. Can you explain uh, so how we're going to do So to be it? a nonprofit, sure. you need sure. to have a board. And we have um, a board of all women, no men yet, mm -hmm. um, but they're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 is it's growing. You got like Jim Green, but he's not on the board. Ah, he's not on the board. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to the meetings to be on the board. Um, okay, that's He has true. not come to the meetings sure, yet. But sure, he's, he's I'm sure. I'm sure you know it's. I'll a, try to get my husband to join. Uh, Matthew Piet. Uh, it's, he a, needs it's, to a, join. it's a it's a yeah. it's an odd time. Some sure, people still sure. feel very uncomfortable. Sure. And, and we yeah, appreciate we that. we through the pandemic and, uh, you know, that's uh, what Deb, Deb is mentioning here. Life goes uh, on, we right? We can't right, stop we can't doing stop. everything. So right. that's true. we'll continue it with what we have and right, right. keep it going. And so we have a Facebook page. So right, there's a Facebook page. Yep. And Green oh, Team yeah. of Londonderry. Oh, yes, that's right. Please go there. That's right. Like Social us. media and please contribute. If you're not able to volunteer for the Green Group in Londonderry, please, please donate. And, I, and I'm going to do that because I've not been very active. I intend to be active because I love this project. Um, it's oh. just my circumstances in, you know, fighting illness. Um, you know, Deb, Deb and I are both cancer survivors. Uh, we both had to deal with breast cancer at different times in our lives. But here we are marching on and trying to do something. Yep, they you say know. you can't keep a good person down, right? Good they woman can't. down. They can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, um. uh, absolutely. And I and I wanted to uh, speak a little about you know we had I know um, you're acting locally and my hats off to you. We had the climate summit uh, that happened uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and they still they just now ended. And and I remember a speech from the Barbados uh, Prime Minister who said, code zero, code zero, we must act now, we must act now. And um, it's now or never. We, we really have to have more Deborah, uh, Deb, Paul. Uh, what are, I answer in, uh, to anything, so don't know, worry. <laughs> we, we need to have more of her all over the world to work locally to enhance and, and, and help the community to uh, prosper, and take advantage of what we have. And we have very fertile land over here. We're very blessed with many farms. We have uh, Sunnycrest, we have Max Apples that we mentioned Merrill earlier. Farms. Um, Merrill Farms and, uh, and Elwood Orchards. Elwood and and, and Kit, Kit Plummer, who has the Christmas tree farm. Oh yes, that's right, that's right. So this use, I, I heard, I don't know if we can go a little bit into the history of London Dairy. Um, I heard that this area used to be called, and you're you know, you're the uh, publisher of Nutfield Publications. It, it, it used to be called Nutfield. Correct, and we just celebrated the 300th of Nutfield during the, uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, actually. Right. Um, but it, it, was, it was called Nutfield because we had mm -hmm. a lot of mm -hmm. chestnut trees. Mm -hmm. And um, then they clear cut and for the Queenswood. The, the big wide plank floors that you see in all of those 1800 houses that are like this big. Um, that's what they did it for. And you could actually stand in some of the high points where Londonderry had a ski lift. Uh, it's now, um, what is it called? I'm trying to think, Meeting House oh, right, um, right. off of Hardy. Right there was one of the right. high points. And you could stand there right. and you could see when they clear cut it all the way into Boston. Wow. But this caused a great blight and the chestnut has had a hard time coming back and mankind now has to so and I hand do pollinate. Love chestnuts. Oh my gosh, I just bought some yesterday <laughs> from our local Hannaford supermarket. <laughs> so now we have to hand pollinate these trees to get them to come back. But that is why we were called Nutfield and um, 
then we we they, the town started breaking off and subdividing and so which um, to which towns are we talking about Wyndham Derry it was Derry Wyndham London Derry and part of Manchester oh okay and, and now the, the like airport. near the Deerfield area right and and the airport uh, is the London I mean it's called sorry not it's not called London Derry but it's actually called the Boston Regional Airport, and it's actually based in Londonderry land, partly, right? All of or it all is of in Londonderry, except the front door. All of it is in Londonderry. Oh, except okay. the front door. Oh, okay. Is so, in Manchester. So it is a Londonderry property, and I think we do uh, get some fees given to us from uh, oh. Manchester. Maybe not, no? We, what do we get from having the airport here? Um, I guess you can say the land around it is uh, is more attracted to be built up mm -hmm. as it has been recently mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. after we built the infrastructure up there. Um, but that's really, I mean, they yeah. do pay um, part of the police that covers up there is Londonderry mm -hmm. and they pay for that. Okay. Even though they're Londonderry officers, they're paid for by the right. Manchester, right. so that doesn't okay. impact our, our right. taxes. But right. um, being close to an airport does help to draw businesses, mm -hmm. you know, to our town. To our town. Um, and I can see we're having more uh, hotel, three-star type hotels coming, Marriott, the Marriott. We have three, maybe, sleep in. In, in town? Maybe not. We don't, uh, we don't Well, have we have the sleep in, which I wouldn't sleep consider in. a right. three-star hotel, maybe. Right, it's a small, it's, it's a like sm a bed and breakfast almost, isn't well, it? Um, not quite. Yeah, but and then you have um, the other hotel, but that's all in Manchester, um, mm -hmm. the Best Western, mm -hmm. and then the Marriott, which again I think is in Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, I have heard, haven't seen anything. I don't know for sure. Woodmont mm -hmm. was talking about putting yes. in um, a couple of hotels. That would be nice. Um, but I think so. Uh, I we we would have more guests. <laughs> I haven't seen any of it yet, and, uh, hopefully they'll come, which yeah, is jobs. Right, I mean, right. it's all jobs. Yes. You know, you, there's usually restaurants and bars, which is a nightlife, which is attracted into a hotel and more conventions and, and things like that. And you have people who have to clean and right, maintain and, right. you know, who host parties and things. So you, you, you do create jobs when you bring right. in. And more restaurants. I, I can see we're yes, getting more please. restaurants. I uh, hope so. Uh, we <laughs> we have to drive quite a bit. Uh, I'm mostly, I used to be vegetarian, but I'm mostly vegetarian now. And it's so hard to find vegetarian food here in Londonderry, but we were lucky that this year we had a restaurant called Troy's that opened up uh, yes. that, that, uh, where we frequent, my husband and I go there. We try to eat mostly vegetarian for health reasons and because I feel, you know, he's it's a, And he's better. a Londonderry boy. It's a, exactly. It's great. Right, who created it. So that's a good success story about Londonderry. Uh, yeah, Troy does a good job. I think so. I, we love the food and they have something, I don't know if you tried it, uh, it it's called uh, Vegetarian Shepherd's Pie. It's not on I their menu. Not. It's not on their menu, but he can ask for it. It is so delicious. Oh, I give highly, it a shot. highly recommend. <laughs> In addition to their delicious drinks. smoothies and drinks, and the bowls, and the, the bowls, bowls are, are really, really good. Um, so uh, I want to go a little bit um, into another area. We've, you and I, have recently talked a lot and participated in some community activities to try and understand the water contamination issue that's going on in this town. We, we've heard about Flint, Michigan and other horror stories and a lot of people have watched the Aaron Brockovich movie where this very uh, young woman uh, pursued uh, the polluters and, and succeeded in, in having some remedy uh, into the town water uh, situation. Mm -hmm. uh, over here, we, we are not very clear There's who, who the polluters are. We've got one in mind, and Merrimack has got the same issue. Bedford, I believe, has the same issue. Litchfield. And, and Litchfield as well. So this is an issue. Uh, we were talking about the environment. We want clean air, but we also want clean water. We want our right. water to be safe. And this is an issue that has affected hundreds of homes here in Londonderry. And I'm very concerned about it because, you know, uh, the next generation, we have to think about our children, our grandchildren. We want them to grow up in this beautiful town, but we want this town to be healthy. So right. uh, do you know uh, where we're at in that respect? With well, the water it's been going on for a while. Um, I first became aware of it 
of the, the water issue, I want to say back in 2016, um, we started realizing that there is contamination going on. But Londonderry has, ha has five Superfund sites, and these super, some of these Superfund sites are leaching out. That's one source. Another source is and could be, you know, some of it um, when they would de-ice the runways in the airport, that uh, chemical. And, but they've gotten better with it, so that's mm -hmm. good. Right. But some of it is, 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 is due to that. Yeah. When they do um, fire testing, mm -hmm. the foam that right. they put down right. has this contaminant right. they in it. They call them the PF PFAs uh, is a generic term, but it's uh, perfluoro something. I can never I can go never all the way. It's either, so long. It's all I PFAs know is, is all I know. PFOAS also. But uh, each one of them, ha it, where they come from has a well, distinct, PFAS. it yes. has a distinct, um, kind of like we do. We're all human, right? right? But our DNA has little bits of different things in it. The same thing is true of these PFOAs, and they're, they're plastics. Um, they're not naturally occurring, they're man-made, but each one has a little bit of a twist from where they come from. So they can tell where the different PFOAs come from. So oh, that's good. That's um, good to know. it helps figure out you know, who is yes. the contaminator and how vast is it. And it, it, the one with you know, St. Cobain, um, it's not just the groundwater, it's in the air. So it goes up in a plume and it can blow over and sit on top of a uh, a stagnant pond that could be an aquifer or a, a mouth of a, of, a, of, a, of a bigger water system. It sits there, it then sinks to the bottom, it then gets into the underground water, which then gets into other you know, veins of water, and it can be anywhere. And that's why when you see this contamination, you know, just picture a bunch of houses down the street. The first house is at 70, the next house is nothing, the next house is at 12, the next house is at 90, and it, because it all depends on, when you're on wells, it depends on where you've drilled right. into what right. vein or what water source you're drawing, drawing from. from. And it may be from very far away. Right, right. Um, but and you that, don't that's a situation here in Londonderry. We have wells. I personally also have a well. Some people do have town water, city water. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the, is it the case that the majority of homes have wells? Correct, because okay. it's too expensive, yes. um, because they're so rural still, right. um, to run all and to lay all these pipes. Plus. The granite state, there's a lot of granite. That means a lot of blasting. That means a lot of lifting up of all the roads that we've put down to, and that's expensive now to put down because of petroleums, you know, to make the, the tar to retar and de yeah, it's expensive. It's just expensive. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there is no real number, but um, there's been a number thrown around. If we were to think about putting Londonderry on, you know, everybody on drinking water, um, city water, uh, it would it would probably run into the three four hundred million dollar mark mark maybe higher, which would raise the taxes and uh, raising taxes is an issue that a lot of people are worried about. They don't want to pay so so much of right. it uh, if they don't have to. People right. prefer to have their wells, which is free water. You don't pay right, and and, and a lot of people, you know. Right. Live free or die in New Hampshire. That's our That's state, right. motto. That's the state motto. That's um, yeah. But yeah. the fact is, you know, that they, they also are like, well, we don't want it to go by because they want them to. It should be a choice whether I want to hook up to this water, or I don't. Or you don't. Um, That's right. And so that right. becomes another. There's so That's many. another issue that the voters will be deciding on eventually. Yes. I think uh, whether or not yeah. they want to have and, city water. And the and cost of water itself is going up. Penichuk, people who, right. so Londonderry is, is services by three water companies, Penichuk, uh, Manchester Water, and Derry Water. Um, Penichuk is going up, I mean, Manchester and Derry are going up, but not quite as much as Penichuk, which is 21% wow. to that's, the residents. That's very steep. And yes. that's a lot of money. That's and, a lot of money. you know, it, yeah. it becomes, Right. issues and then there was talk about you know taking it on as our side it's just all in the talking stages right now sure, sure. and you know really at the end of the day we'll figure something out some right. hybrid form right. of that right. 
Um, but people should get their wells tested. There are filtration systems you can buy. I don't know if they actually have a good way of disposing yet of these filters, which is a whole nother issue. Right, um, right. But they have they to get... They have to have a massive warehouse where they keep them until they figure out how to get rid of the forever chemicals, which is what PFAS is, is known as. Right. Uh, it, it's been around since the 50s. Right. It's right. the whole DuPont thing. Right. It's the Brockovich, like you said, right. over in um, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 plastics and Teflons, the nonstick pans. So maybe we need to go back to cast iron. Yes, um. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's I harder I to clean. Bunch, I know harder to clean, but much safer, much yes. safer for uh, for yes. our ourselves, for our families. And uh, and yes. I'm I'm so glad that uh, you have been involved. And that's you know part of reason why I wanted to have you because I I always say, but how does Deb do? Oh. All that she but does. Before we change from water, yeah, go you ahead, have to go tell ahead. people yes. there is a, another Facebook page called Citizens for Concerned Water. Concern, yeah, Concerned um, Citizens for Clean Water. Yep, That's and right. they should go there. Go to that page, Concerned Citizens for Clean Water on Facebook. It's a London Dairy uh, page just where citizens can discuss uh, what's happening because we, we none of us know enough to take a position. We don't know, uh, are we gonna go for it? You know, uh, the town has a PFAS task force. Uh, how are they doing? Are they getting ahead? Are they well, discussing with the polluters? Well, it's dismantled now for the moment. Oh, they dismantled it. For the okay. moment, because they were on, they were a right. task force, so they had mm -hmm. a job to do. Mm -hmm. They did their job, mm -hmm. and now the town's thinking about creating a permanent water mm -hmm. committee okay, um, to move that, continually look at it, because it is a moving target. Right. But that part of that group is we have meetings yes. um, once a month with a wonderful woman from yes. uh, Community Net Action. Action Networks, um, yes, from uh, Vermont, that's and right. And people can talk can about talk their problems. About that. That's right. We uh, Community Action Works has been helping us discuss the issue. We don't know where we're going with this. We don't know how to approach it. People find it expensive to buy those water filters that you mentioned yep. that do remove those chemicals. And I highly recommend that people get a loan, do whatever you can to get those filters. Do not use the, the water that's contaminated. And the town um, got a grant. Oh, the town and has a grant. And they're in the process of collecting that grant. And once we have that grant, um, we'll be putting out that you, you get a one-time um, $500 right. rebate for lack of it's a better a, word. It's 10% of what you'd have paid, but it's worth it. It's uh, I, I, there's no price tag to be put on your health. Nope. And we didn't mention this, but the PFAS, the forever chemicals, cause kidney cancer, all kinds of cancers, all kinds of uh, pro problems and diseases. Uh, mm. and, and New Hampshire has the highest pediatric cancer in the country, which I was shocked to hear. And God knows, we don't know where this is coming from. Is it, who are the polluters? We have a lot of textile, companies uh, that, that use uh, PFAS and, and products to clean right. and to... TCI, to, is, TCI one is one of them. TCI is one of them. So it, it is a, a very, very uh, difficult and dangerous uh, situation that this beautiful town, it's so beautiful. I encourage everybody to visit uh, London Dairy and to meet uh, these wonderful uh, neighbors of ours, uh, but it is a very, very uh, serious situation, this water yes. situation. Yes, it is. And, uh, I, and I, I really would like uh, to see the community come together to stop the polluters. And, and I, I, in my view, the first thing to do is find out who are the polluters. You mentioned the airport, and they're doing something about it. St. Goban has been sued by the Merrimack, by the town of Merrimack, and they are also responsible to the NHDES, which is the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, who are controlling, and they are probably the, uh, the only uh, governmental, federal governmental right. agency that regulates uh, pollution in this, in this state. And we also have politicians, we have our Congressman Chris Pappas, who made a very good intervention on our behalf yes, in the U.S. Uh, Congress about water issues, and we're very grateful for that, and we, we have uh, also uh, some uh, activists, uh, Mindy Messner, who has been pushing for legislation to stop 
pollute us from having a, you know, free for all, you know, they, they're free to pollute, there needs to be some limits and the limits need to be lower. I think, you know, when you talk about 12, you know, uh, whatever the, the yeah. but we, it's, we it's need to protect. The thing is, is right? that they couldn't test yeah. for this stuff before. Before, that's right. And now they can. They can. And so now so, as they testing right. for it and so figuring it out, right. it's all changing. And that's why I said it's a constant moving target. And as we get better and better at figuring things out, right. we're finding more and more things. Right. And so do I think that the big companies went in there and said, oh, we're going to poison right. everyone? Right. Uh, absolutely not. Right. They, right. they just didn't know. They just didn't know. And some of them knew, but they just didn't know how to prevent it. That uh, too. And, they, they oh, and some of them look the other employ. way because they're just and, and into corporate greed. But right. The and, and I heard that at some point some company came from, uh, uh, from Maine, which has... Uh, more stringent and better, I would say, legislation to prevent polluters from polluting, uh, that they moved here because New Hampshire wasn't really on it, so to speak. We weren't on top of this, and now we are. Now, thank God, yeah. we are uh, taking uh, action, and we want things to get better. We, right. want, we want to get into a position where we are and, and I do think it was Vermont, too. Vermont, Vermont has well. very, very strict rules. Right. And, but we didn't have a lot of manufacturing plants coming here right. for that kind right. of product. And so we didn't have a lot of things in place. And so now as they're, they were looking at us, right. we're starting to look at them and mm -hmm. now we're changing our rules. Mm -hmm. We're acclimating to what it mm -hmm. needs to be adjusted, which is what you're supposed to do. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm, I'm really glad that you are, you know, so um, involved and and you care about your community clearly um, i love to get uh, londonary times you know i always look out for it uh, it's a way to keep up with what's going on in town especially during the time i was ill uh, for two years i was gone uh, couldn't participate in anything but i was able to read the londonary times and know what's going on in my neck of the woods so to speak um, so uh, we're getting, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> towards the end of our show, and I always ask guests that sit on that chair, uh, what matters most? You sit in that chair because you care, and I'm only inviting people who care to sit in that chair. So you've been around, you grew up in a diverse neighborhood, and you're now in a less diverse neighborhood, and I can tell you that I'm one of very unique, colorful people here. <laughs> Uh, but let me t tell me something. Uh, when you you grew up there and then moved here, and you you fought. I mean, you're a breast cancer survivor. You're a newspaper publisher, and you care deeply about your family and your community. Clearly, mm -hmm. and that's the same with me. And I, I I've said it before. What matters most to me is family, community, the clean air, the clean water, clean environment and unity above all of, of neighbors and friends to be supportive. What matters most to you? Mm. Oh, I can't say everything, can I? You can, <laughs> you can. Yes. I, I am that person who That's can't say no. I've always been that way. You know, people will call me and they'll tell me their problem and I take it to heart and I, and I, and I try to fix it or figure out a way to help them. And it's so funny, it, This I know this is really not on topic, but it is on topic. It is. So the other day I was in my car and uh, a John Lennon song came on, a Beatles song, um, and it, it said in the song, and I'd never heard these words so true before in my, is, I must have listened to this song a thousand times, maybe more. And it said, it said, you know, basically we're now fine. If you're not awake, you don't know. So people live blissfully, and that's the problem. They walk around with their eyes closed, closed. and yes. they need to open their eyes. They need to focus in on what is truly important. And uh, you've said it, your family, your world. I mean... There is the big world, but then there's my world, what I can touch exactly. and see and feel. Exactly. You know, when you, when you go out and you volunteer your time to be a bell ringer and you see people less fortunate than you and you're able to help them. That, there's nothing like it, isn't it? 
And no, maybe, maybe it's so, it, you yeah. can write all the checks you right. want to the yeah. United Way, Absolutely. to the Cancer Society, but when you work at a soup kitchen for the caregivers, Kids, yeah. for the why, um, yeah. pick a group. Pick I, a, there's yeah. so many, there's of, so them many that, of them. And you're actually Reported. there, and it's not yeah. just the check. The checks are wonderful, right. but, but being there. Get your hands dirty, you know, roll up your sleeves. You that know, that rolling up your sleeves. is what and get it. truly... It's about, it's, it's and so about. that's what I care most about. Absolutely, and and I, I have to applaud you, and <coughs> I admire you, uh, and that's why you're sitting in that chair. <laughs> you're only my second guest, and I cannot thank you as a community member, as a new member of this community. I have to thank you for what you do, because I, I, I thought <laughs> until recently, oh, I do a lot, but when I saw you, I was like, my gosh. What is that made of? She can handle the newspaper. She's representing us in the town council. She's trying to get their community to be green and environmentally sustainable. And, and, yeah. and, and that's, that is just so key. And you are an example, Deb, of who a hero is. And I want to declare you a hero of this day. I want to write this on the show. Thank you so much for well, all Thank you, you for do. having me. There's so many more topics that we could talk about. I, it's you will crazy. Come back. You um, will come back. But, you know, it, it, it's as, as, again, John Lennon said, um, there are no problems. There are only solutions. You just got to keep digging for them. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I'm a problem solver myself. Uh, I, when I hear of a situation, I always say, what are you doing about it? Right. That that's the f the first thought that comes to my mind. Yeah. And and I and I think that should be the first thought that all of us uh, should have in our mind. So and it helps us. I mean, I had to deal with mental health issues a lot of times, and we will have a show on that topic uh, eventually. But I'll tell you, there's nothing better for your mental health than volunteering and helping your neighbor, helping your next door neighbor. Uh, your or elderly stranger. neighbor or, or a st perfect stranger because we are all in this together we are all one i have this belief because we don't know what the you know spiritual world is like some people have religious beliefs that tell them you know the soul exists after death and so forth i believe that you are on this earth preparing if you have a soul you're preparing for your soul to have a very very clear-cut path in the other world and the way to do it is to volunteer and uh, there's no better example than you because i know your newspaper does not make millions you're a <laughs> newspaper publisher <laughs> it's a free newspaper by the yeah. way so uh, yeah i just think that people need to stop throwing shoes right and if you're gonna throw a shoe have an answer to that there you go have a solution to what you feel there is a problem with right Exactly. Rather than just throwing a throwing shoe. Throwing a shoe. Or, and, or rather and than attacking your neighbor. Yeah, you know, put you, that you shoe may not on know for a second neighbor. and walk Ex in it. Walk in it and, and be in that person's shoe. Uh, you've, you've said it all, and I couldn't be happier. Um, I'm glad oh. we, we had this. And, and let me know who is coming next uh, for, from the Green Group. Your board, we talked about it. Yes. So do you know who's coming? The next person that will be coming will be Marge Boudet's who okay, is mm -hmm. uh, a volunteer in this community. She's been here for a very long time. She sits on the Conservation Commission. Um, she's very involved uh, at UNH. She's a master gardener. Um, and she, she just really is a great person yes. um, and does volunteer, like I said, with the Real Trail, with the Green Team, anything conservation-wise. She's there, and, and she has the best interest of uh, the community when they make decisions right, on the right. uh, Conservation Commission. Another another hero. And I'm so glad you're surrounding Funny yourself all women. with all these. All these people. <laughs> Did I Wait, say that? I, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Why not? There's nothing, there's nothing off limits here. We, we're good. We're good. But thank you so much well, for thank coming. Thank you for having for me. For sharing your thoughts and for being here with us. It means a and lot to me. Thank you for doing this. I think people Absolutely. need to get to know who makes up our town. Absolutely. There are so many and great absolutely, people here. Absolutely. And that's what I'm on a quest to find out. You know, the show is, uh, you mentioned being selfish. I'm doing it for selfish reasons. I'm doing it for selfish reasons. I want to know you. I want to know 
everybody who makes up this because town. Because there is and make, no you know, such the thing. There is you know. no such thing as a selfless act. Right. We give blood. Right. Why? Because it makes us feel good. Right. Um, you know, there is no such thing. There's just levels of it. There right. are some people who do it just right. for greed and money, my corporate greed friends, and there right. are other people that do it for their own self-worth, their own right. value. Exactly. You've got to sleep the night. That's what I say. How can you sleep if you've been mean to your neighbor or if you've called names to others and, and if, if demeaned or, or treated others badly? The main thing is treat your neighbor as you'd like to be treated. Exactly. And I think that's my that editorial this week. Oh, that's <laughs> fantastic. Well, do pick up a copy of Londonary Times this week, as I will. And uh, we'll see you next time. And Debbie, once no, thank again, you. Deb, thanks. thanks for coming. I, I couldn't have been happier with you taking the time, busy as you are, to share your thoughts and share what you do with us. No worries. Thank you thank so you. much. Until the third episode of What Matters Most, thank you all for your time and for listening and watching the show. Thank you.